Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, attorney Savania DeBarros. What's up, everybody? I am Savanya, the host of What Are You Sporting About podcast and the protector of athletes. I'm so excited to be here with you again. Today, I have an amazing topic on deck for you, and it's something that's been brewing around in my soul or my spirit, as some of us would say. But first, I have to invite you guys to my annual event taking place July 27th through the 29th this year called the NIL Combine. So we're going to be on deck in July 27th through the 29th here in Chicago for the NIL Combine 2023 live event. This is the second annual NIL Combine um, to happen. So if you are a student athlete, parent of a student athlete, coach, any form of athlete advocate, you should be in the room. NIL Combine is the number one premier event for name, image, and likeness, where we help student athletes and those who support them to break down barriers, barriers to education, resources, information, people, finance, anything, right? So that is our mission to support 50,000 student athletes in five years with monetizing, leveraging, and protecting their name, image, and likeness rights. So I'm super excited about that. You can RSVP right now. Tickets are on sale. Go to bit.ly forward slash NIL Combine 2023. Bit.ly forward slash NIL Combine 2023. Bit.ly forward slash NIL Combine 2023 to go ahead and secure your ticket. All right. So today, today, I am talking about the protected transition, the protected transition. We all take transitions in our life. You know, some are prepared, some are not. But when I had the ability to witness these young men coming from the back of a room to the draft stage, to accept their jersey for the team that they were going to. One thing that I noticed was there there was a literal and a figuratively transition or figurative transition for these athletes. And, and the same is true for us too. Even if you're not going pro, look at the space that you're in. So let me talk a little bit about the physical transition that I witnessed. When these young men came walking from the back to the stage, they walked from the back alone by themselves to the stage, okay? There were so many people that they passed. They hugged their families and friends, whoever was with them. They may have, you know, dapped it up with their their counterparts on the way out, may have spoke to a few people on the way of walking up to the stage, But nonetheless, they were still alone. They were by themselves. Once they accepted their team that they were drafted to, they gave their spiel or their speech, dapped it up to their fans who were in the front. When they got ready to leave the stage, there was a small army of people with them. Now, I don't know who these people are. Could have been security just for the event. Could have been security for the athlete. But the point is, they walked up by themselves, but they walked off with a small army. And I call that the protected transition. One thing I want to say is, you can be on a journey that feels so lonesome. And it may require you to leave the people that you love. It may require you to take a separation from your friends. It may require you, and oftentimes it will require you, to have a different mindset around what it is that you said that you wanted for yourself and what the doing will require for you to achieve the thing that you said that you wanted. So we're on this path of this journey where we have to walk by ourselves. And as we're walking, we are 
technically transitioning to our next phase in life. Even in the transition, there are some things that can come up. There's fear that can come up. There's this possibility of self-doubt. Can I even do it? Right? It doesn't, it's not necessarily fear when we're thinking, okay, can we do it? It's like, do I have what it takes to really achieve this thing? I said I wanted it. Now I'm here. Can I do it? And at that moment, at that point, that's time, that's sometimes how people end up reverting back to an old state of themselves because they get into the middle of the transition and they're like, oh my God, I don't, I don't even know if I can do this, right? It could be partially fear. It could be partially self-doubt. It could be all of it. It could be other things, okay? But at the end of the day, we all end up in a transition, a transitory state in our lives, in our professional lives, And it's up to us to choose that deciding moment to really say to ourselves, I know I can do this because I'm here right now. And if I couldn't do it, this would not be possible. Now, unlike these amazing young men who were drafted and on a huge stage, not all of us will have large stages to stand on for other people to see our transitions in real time. But we are on a stage. We are in a stage of life. We are in a stage where we can choose to show up, put our shoulders back, our heads up, and walk with pride and not diminish the amount of achievement that we have accomplished by being on that stage, right? Here's here's how it looked for some people. Some people get on the stage, right? Their figurative stage of transition. And then they will say, well, I don't deserve to be here. Oh, well, I shouldn't be here. Well, that person did better than me, so they should be here. Or my stage shouldn't even look like this. It should look like that. All of those things are really diminishing the value that you've brought to your stage. And technically, your stage of transition, your stage of transition. Not all of us are going to have a big roaring crowd in the front of us as we transition in real time. But there are people who have been championing you on and loving you through this process that you have to give yourself credit and you have to love yourself enough to recognize that you are in a transition and on a stage of transition that deserves for you to continue to walk forward into your purpose. Now, let me take you back a little bit to the story and what I witnessed about these young men as they left their stage. When they left their stage, there was a small army of people with them. And I call that the protected transition. There's so many of us who know that we are in a state of transition, something that is paramount to our success and the success of our families. And we will will begin to leave and walk away, walk off of our stage, walk into the transition and remain unprotected. We'll continue to allow the same type of people to have access to us. We will allow ourselves to continue doing the same thing that didn't serve us at the prior stage before the transition. Okay, come on now, stay with me. And that's what I call like reverting back. You have to protect your transition at every transition. Come on now, you have to protect your transition at every transition. If you don't protect your transition, you're going to end up in the same place or worse than you were before you got started. Prime example, when we look at professional athletes who have been on a journey of transitioning for a long time, guess what happens? There are so many things that start to come up. Now they have to learn how to play in the pros. Playing in the pros is different than playing in college. They have to understand how to really care of themselves as business businessmen, businesswomen, 
okay? Whatever pro sport that you're in, you're going to have to learn how to carry yourself as a businessman or woman, because now we're looking at the business of sports when you get to that level. There are mindset shifts that are going to come up in the transition that maybe you've never had to deal with before because your stage had never been this big before. And then if you don't make the mental transitions that you need along with the physical transition that you're having, you're going to end up reverting yourself back to a, a place that you don't want to be because what will happen is you have not protected your mental transition along with your physical transition. Even if you're not a professional athlete, there are people out there and it's probably you who are still doing the exact same thing. You are not protecting yourself on the transition. You are allowing people to have access to you who should not have access to you. You are allowing yourself to go into these mental solitude places that are not safe for you. You are allowing yourself to, to conjure up things that are, are harming your ability to do the job that you told yourself you wanted to do. Right? So you have to have a conscious, a consciousness about what does my protected transition look like? And sometimes your protected transition, it actually may look like having other people alongside of you walking on that next part of your journey so they can help you protect that transition. Now, if we're looking from a business perspective, what would those people look like? And I said all the time, guys, I put it all in my books. If you don't have the What Are You Sporting About book, go right now to prosportlawyer.com forward slash bestselling dash book and make sure you get the book, all right? Get the book. I put it in that book. I put it in my Athletes Making Moves book because it's essential that we understand how to create team and how to put people around us who will help to protect us. I am the protector of athletes. I've always been a protector, even before I was called the protector of athletes. I've always been the protector because I understand how underutilized protection is, but how necessary people should, how necessary it is um, in people's lives. Like they underestimate the amount of protection that they need until they realize they're in a state of, of need of the same protection that they ignored. So we got to put the right people around us who are also going to aid us in protecting the transition that we're in. All right. So the protected transition, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. We need to recognize every transition that we are on. That means slowing down enough, slowing down enough to appreciate the moments and the spaces and the achievements that we've made. I had a hard time doing that at one point in my life. Now I recognize, oh, I've actually achieved something here. Let me stop and celebrate because guess what that means? That means I'm on a transition and I'm continuously walking a transition that's getting me closer to the goal and the dreams and the desires that I said that I wanted that are now becoming a reality for me. And when you stop and you realize the transitions, you can't downplay it. It's not a fluke. It didn't happen just by circumstance. It wasn't a coincident. You worked your butt off for it. You did that. And so it's time for you to slow down and recognize to champion yourself and celebrate yourself and look at the space and the time that you're in. So now your next transition can be even greater, even greater. Even if you had to walk it to a particular point by yourself, who do you need on the next phase of that transition? Who do you need on the next phase of that transition so it can be protected? You can be secure and you continue to have a vertical leap to the dreams that you desire. Come on. I, I, I love this. It took me a minute to record this particular episode because I don't want to just bring fluff to you guys. Like, I don't want to just bring fluff to you guys at all. So it's important to me that I communicate the things that are like deep into my soul. And the protected transition was one of those things. 
So I really, really want you to think about it. Think about it from the perspective of just coming off the NFL draft. It was amazing seeing these young men. And as I videotaped their transition of walking individually, then leaving with a small army, I was like, whoa, I never even thought about it like that. I never stopped to think about how their transition became protected, right? Immediately, there's the symbolic support of you have a home now. You're not alone. They walked up to the stage alone, but when they got ready to leave after now, they've transitioned into my identity. A part of my identity has now shifted to be this professional athlete for this team. I'm not by myself anymore. I have my family. I have my club or whatever they, you know, you may call yourself. It's the same thing for us guys. And and don't listen. Cuz I know I said identity, so don't you know, don't come for me, right? Because I know all too well that just being an athlete is not our full identity. But I want I don't want you to lose sight of what I'm saying. Okay? Some of us need a home where we're nurtured. Our goals are nurtured. Our transitions are nurtured and cared for and protected. Because when you find people who are similar to you or who have similar or the same dreams, there is a place amongst you that is equally protected. Or you may find that brotherhood or sisterhood where you all see each other doing their thing. You're like, you know what? I got you. That's also protection. I'm protecting my sister. I'm protecting my brother because I know that they're in this particular phase of their life, right? Or they're in this particular phase of their business or they're in a particular phase of professional sports. I got you. That's protected transition too, but that's also have the discernment to know that this is a person who supports and protects this transition. And you have to have that discernment to know who and when you should have around you and in your corner, period. So I hope this has helped you to really think about your transitions, celebrating them, doing away with the the limiting and defeating mindset around the stages that you are in or on and what you need to do to then protect that transition moving forward so you continue to achieve and receive the success that you desire, not what society has, has written out for you, but what you desire for yourself who you desire for yourself, all right? So if you love conversations like this, I would absolutely love for you to join me this July 27th through the 29th here in Chicago. Um, I'm super excited for this, for the NIL Combine 2023 live event. Listen, I go deep on my stuff because I, I want not just student athletes, but the parents and the people who truly support them to recognize what NIL truly is. Everybody just like letting those letters roll off of their tongue these days, but there's a real significant impact of NIL and you're going to get it at NIL Combine Live. So I invite you, come RSVP, get your ticket right now, bit.ly forward slash NIL Combine 2023, bit.ly forward slash NIL Combine 2023. You will not be sorry. Okay, you will not be sorry. NIL Come On is the number one premier event for name, image, and likeness. What makes us different than other events is we don't give you surface level talk. We don't give you puff, puff cream, if you will, right? What we do is we dive deep so you can understand exactly how to navigate, leverage, and monetize NIL, and most importantly, how to protect it for the long haul. All right. So this is not a skate the surface type of event. This is definitely a deep dive. So you can go in, get your own deals, leverage, monetize and protect them. Okay, and if you are the parent, coach, athletic director, then you will have the information and knowledge to help your student athlete actually be in this space to really protect them, protecting this transition going into NIL so that they have the resources that they need to further, you know, really move the needle um, in their direction. So if you have not yet registered, 
I encourage you, get your ticket. I don't know what you're waiting for. Get your ticket right now at bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. Bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. Bit.ly forward slash NIL combine 2023. All right, guys. Well, that is my time. I'm Savannah Debrows, protector of athletes. And it's always a pleasure to educate, motivate, and support you to your next level. I hope that you join me here again next week, Monday, for another episode of What Are You Sporting About? And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure you go to your favorite podcasting platform and subscribe to What Are You Sporting About podcast so you never miss an episode. All right. Talk to you guys later. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on What Are You Sporting About podcast. Make sure to visit our website, prosportlawyer.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our book, What Are You Sporting About? Attorney Savania DeBarros is available for private consulting at S ldebarros.com. And remember, we're here to educate, support, and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something.